three weeks after Gilles Villeneuve's famous win on the streets of Monte Carlo, Formula One was back, this time for the Spanish Grand Prix. It was held at Jarama, an incredibly tricky circuit on the outskirts of Madrid. Jacques Lafitte in the Ligier took pole ahead of the two Williams of world champion Alain Jones and Carlos Reutemann. John Watson in the McLaren, Alain Prost in the Renault and Bruno Giacomelli in the Alfa Romeo. Villeneuve was only in seventh. The race started at 15.30. Lafitte had a clutch problem and was slow to get away, while Villeneuve was like a cannonball and got up to third place on the first lap. Ahead of him were Jones and Reutemann, while Lafitte was only ninth. On the second lap, Gilles got into the Argentine slipstream on the finish straight and overtook him to take second. On lap 13, Jones passed the finish line with another fantastic lap time. Ten seconds ahead of Villeneuve in the 126CK. The frenzied pace, however, was too much for the Australian. At what should have been an easy corner, the Williams went off the track into the dirt, across the gravel and almost hit the barriers. Gilles was in the lead. There were 66 laps remaining and Villeneuve knew that his tyres would not make it to the end if he continued to work them as hard as he had before Jones went off, so he started to think about looking after his equipment. His 126CK was very strong under braking thanks to the latest generation technology provided by Brembo, who were celebrating their 100th race in partnership with Ferrari. Furthermore, his engine was by far the most powerful. Gilles had decided he would push the brakes to their limit and get the most out of the engine on the straights, but would conserve his tyres in the slower sections of the track. With 20 laps to go, Villeneuve and Reutemann were still out in front, but Lafitte was now in third. The Ligier had been the best car in qualifying and had a great turbo engine despite it not being on a par with the Ferrari. On the 62nd lap, the Frenchman overtook the Argentine and the Ferrari fans started to worry that Lafitte could be a threat for Villeneuve. However, Gilles was driving the perfect race and did not make a single mistake in the last 15 laps. The Canadian, who on that Sunday discovered to be also a good strategist, decided to slow his pace even further as it was not in his interests to fight only with Lafitte. It was better if the Frenchman had to keep looking in his mirrors as Gilles backed everyone up behind him. He did not even bother to lap Giacomelli in the Alfa Romeo. Villeneuve crossed the finish line at the end of the 80th lap, winning the Spanish Grand Prix. However, what stood out were the gaps. He had beaten Lafitte by 22 hundredths and Watson by 58. Reutemann was fourth, 1.01 seconds back, and De Angelis was fifth, 1.24 seconds off. Anyone who had said that Gilles Villeneuve was a completely instinctive driver had been proven wrong. It was his sixth and last victory in Formula One, his second consecutive win in the 1981 season.